perfect. Hi, my name's James, you're on Skeleton Television. I'm sitting here with Rocket Science, Melbourne Band. They've just released, back over here please camera, they've just released Different Like You. It's quite an incredible album. First song, Sinful Cowboy. What's it about? Who wrote it? Me and Kit wrote it. It's awesome. We um, sat down and we, um, we, we had some music and we, we, we just tried to um, put some... We, asked, we actually asked the, the music, the, the, the song, because um, the, the music came first before the words. Right. So we actually said to the song, what do you want to be about? And, and, the song, what, the music what, and the song, yeah, where the, where, who had the music to do? Um, How long have you been sitting on that riff? Uh, not very long. It came together pretty quickly. It was pretty immediate. And actually, you had a, well, you had a postcard that was at your house, I believe. It was stuck on the wall. It had several old 60s or 50s postcards. Mm. One of them was Sinful Cowboy. It's really, really nice. Well, it actually said Sinful Cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the, the heading of the postcard. And so I had this idea for a while of, of utilising some of these um, old vintage postcards as um, song ideas. Yeah, right. And um, so on, on this occasion, uh, Sinful Cowboy as a heading seemed to work with this music that Kit had produced. And we were collaborating in the writing of the words. Psychic Man, track two. That's a Dave Gray number. Yeah. I believe. Yep. Now, rumour has it that song, you've had that... For a long, long time. ...on and off for a while. That, that song is the least... It, with different lyrics and different vocal melody, the, the actual instrumental part of the song has been around for you know, a decade and a half or more. Wow. And I've played that in several bands over the years. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know... I'm, you couldn't, I'm, let, I'm you, you couldn't let it go? I'm, I'm or inspired. did you feel it was never properly recorded? Or what was um, the reason to I, keep... I, I, kind of always, I always kind of liked it, but one of my friends, Jamie, said, oh, I'd love to, love to do a cover version of that song, and it was called um, it was called Sweet Liberty at the time. And I went, oh, if, hey, if you wanted to cover it, then maybe you know, change the words, change, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, change a few things about it, make it shorter, make it a minute shorter, because it went for bloody ages, but... Uh, and I kind of it's still quite a long song that as it yeah, is. Yeah, and then I just sort of yeah, exactly. It was ridiculously long. <laughs> it, was so, it was so repetitive. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, you're well, harshest critic, but I have read that a couple of times. Actually. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was talking to Salman Rushdie the other day about yeah, writing yeah, that's right. writing songs, and um, he he said it's not easy. Would you agree? Given that you've gone back to uh, Psychic Man yeah, so many times, would yeah. you? Do, is it a do you find it easy? Do you, do you walk around with a notebook or do you find it something you have to labour over? Well, actually, I go through sort of phases where I sort of just, just you know, just if I think of, you know, just something interesting, I, you know, I think of some kind of funny idea or interesting idea, I'll just jot it down on a piece of paper in no, no particular order and have pages and pages of stuff. And then when it comes time to write a song, and in the case of, yeah, Psychic Man, you know, I had pages and pages of stuff while I was playing the the backing tape to Kit and Kit was just coming up with different melodies and I was saying, here, read this, read that. And then, you know, and as he was singing something, he would sort of add a melody in and I could go, oh, I could add a few words in here and then, so basically... So it's like, almost like chiselling out a... Yeah. A sculpture. Yeah, but so in the, in the same time it took Kit to write a vocal melody, it took me time to write the lyrics, but having, having said that I had, yeah. you know, pages and pages of things to, to work from. To recap for, for Roman, who wasn't listening Roman to his was... brother Dave, not actual brother, brother in the band. Um, he, you know, kind of like brothers. Kind of like brothers. Like we've, you know, it's, you know, you, you, it's a relationship of sorts, and I think brothers said it's strange. It's very deep. It's a very unusual <laughs> it's a fitting, um, like relationship. Like separated at birth, brothers. You know. <laughs> well, it's more, you know, it's different to friendship. I imagine you're in each other's pockets. Well, you know, and it's, it's yeah, it's, it's not about, um, you know, you you do find yourself sitting there in front of each other at different given times. Mm. Um, you haven't got a choice in that matter, mm. which is different to friendship, but it's like being a brother. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, you love your brother. Yeah, but yeah. you don't necessarily but you don't spend choose. every waking moment with him. No, but you, know, so but you, you have a, equally have a, an understanding with him. So. Well, you choose your bandmates. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, actually, because introducing Mickey Heartbreak. That was nice. That was... Uh, thank you. Yeah. You don't look anything like the fourth member on the cover for people that are wondering out there in TV land or YouTube land. So, where's Paul? Paul's uh, on a desert island. He got his wish. <laughs> he, the, he actually won the lottery. He made it, yeah. <laughs> now, Paul, um, Paul just, uh, he kind of had enough and, you know, everything 
he was he's a busy busy man these days. Yeah, he's he running. produced the album. Produced the album. We made it at his studio. Um, he recorded it and produced it, and he's that sort of becoming over the last two and a half years. That's become more and more of a of a of a lifestyle passion, for him yeah. and his absolute passion. And uh, he's definitely that's becoming his his most his biggest priority in his life. But explain to someone who thinks of a band recording as four, in your case, four people, you know, you're on drums, on bass, you weren't there, <laughs> keys, theremin and vocals, you would say, and Paul would have been on the guitar. How does he record himself and how does he jump back and forwards between the how's he press? How's he press play record? record? Does he run in the room or kit, is it yeah, overdubs? Remote control. Kit would press the record and stop. Really? You had a little... I was pretty good at it. I it fucked that up a few times. In your Did you have a long stick or something? Or a, a, be a poker. <laughs> had a poker. <laughs> I'd poke it through. You serious? No, no, we, we, we wanted no, to, we wanted to, you, you often lie? Can you just put it, can you say, I did yesterday in an interview, that's another story. Oh, but no, you press record in half an hour later, you start playing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah,